A wise man once told me that good traders are great risk managers. And this is something that kind of flipped my perspective in the market as I looked to go into trading, trying to make as much money as possible, not really worried about the risk and really ended up understanding that the way to make the most money possible is by worrying about your risk and putting yourself in a safe position. In today's episode of the Trading Coach Podcast, we're gonna talk about three tactics that you can use to ensure that you don't blow your trading account and have as much safety and risk management, I guess you can say, in the market. Um, so that, see that now, that's an interesting question, right? So we're talking about the Swiss crash and we're talking about the fact that it happened really, really quick. The rug was pulled from underneath it and people lost a lot more money than they expected, even if they had stop losses set to the point where many people blew everything and many people even went negative. And this is where risk management comes into trading. And we often speak about risk management in the form of like, you know, how much should you risk per trade and, and blah, 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 like that. And never more than 2% or 3% max. That's that's the most you should do. Um, we talk about risk management as a portfolio as well, where understanding, so again, you, you guys know my story. I lost about $30,000 on yen pairs pretty much um, back when I was managing money, all because I had too many yen pairs in my portfolio, right? So we talk about creating the correct portfolio where because I had what? four or five yen pairs in my portfolio. And, and like now in the market, pretty much all of those yen pairs were correlated at the time. And then a big natural disaster came, a tsunami, and they all went the same direction. And I had trades on all of them, right? So if I had a 2% trade on all of those yen pairs, I had exposure to five yen pairs, 2% a piece, right? That's 10% at risk. I lost all of them. I lost 10% at the, the same time. There's my $30,000 loss, right? And this happened within a matter of hours. Um, that's another risk management tactic that I do now, where it's like I ensure, I create my portfolio in a way that I don't have too many correlated pairs, right? If you look at my portfolio, right? Euro dollar, pound dollar, euro yen, pound yen, dollar yen, dollar uh, Aussie Canada. No, sorry. Um, yeah, well, Aussie Canada, yeah. Dollar Canada, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, right? There are three yen pairs in there. And although we are correlated right now because of the whole intervention thing, typically these three yen pairs aren't really that correlated, right? I don't know if you guys um, follow all three, but the euro, the, the pound yen does whatever the hell it wants. That's why we call it the beast. It wakes up and just decides to be crazy one day. The euro yen is completely different. The dollar yen is completely different, right? These are three yen pairs, but they typically don't correlate. The ones that do correlate, right? If you go down to Aussie yen, Canada yen, New Zealand yen, right? Those are the ones that almost always look the same. I call them the triplets. So part of my risk management tactic was to not only ensure a maximum risk per trade, but to ensure a maximum risk in my portfolio, right? So worst case scenario, not that I, and I, 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 I have never had a situation where I was in all trades at once, but worst case scenario, I set myself up where I can technically have a max risk trade on all of my pairs at the exact same time, somehow lose all of them at the exact same time and still not reach a drawdown level that would cause me to shut down my trading. Now, I would not be very happy with it. Oh no, I would be very upset. There would be crying, there would be tears, there'd be a lot of Drake playing in the background, there'd be pillows and screaming and throwing. I'd probably rent out one of those rage rooms and just start slamming stuff and smashing stuff, but I'd still have a chip in the chair. <laughs> I'd, th I'd throw a cat, right? <laughs> um, but the point is I I've set myself up for, and again, that will never happen. Now, that will never happen. First of all, I would never be in all those trades at the same time. Just, just opportunities don't happen like that. If I were, some of them would have to win, right? Some of them would have to win. Like you, I wouldn't lose all of them at the exact same time. That'd be the mark. That would be manipulation. I'd call my broker. I'd, I'd call my. What are you doing? 
what are you what are you doing right i call my broker would have something against me it'd, it'd be some type of prank but the fact is even if that were worst 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 case scenario were to happen i would still survive as a trader i wouldn't hit margin call so setting that's another form of risk management not just risk management on trade by trade basis but risk management as a portfolio now even bigger than your portfolio and this is what um the original question was even bigger than your portfolio is your account and unfortunately this is another lesson that i learned the hard way i don't know i haven't told this story in in a, in a while but um did you guys know that i i dealt with a scam a scammy broker you guys have been with me for a while you guys remember that i dealt with a scammy broker right i dealt with a broker named pfg right pfg at least I think I remember. Yeah, I think it was PFG. It's been a long time. And they were, I was actually with a broker called uh, Foremost Trading. And they were an introducing broker that went through PFG. So I wasn't actually with PFG, but that's who they, that's where my money was at. Right. And I woke up one day to a flood of emails. And I was like, ah, here we go. I did a YouTube video and someone's mad. I'm like, well, this is more than usual. This is more than normal trolls. Right. And Long story short, it turned out that PFG had been scamming people for a long time. The One of the owners was like, he was stealing money and fudging the books and he tried to commit suicide in his car and all this fun stuff. Long story short, my money was gone. So I lost everything. And this was at a very, very tough time because I had just gotten really good at trading. Like I struggled for so long um, and I had just gotten really good. I grown my account. I was confident. I'm like, this is it. I've achieved my dream. I am a full-time trader. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm like, I'm feeling good about myself. I don't know how many of you guys have reached that point, but like, it, like when you finally get it and you feel good and then your, your account starts to grow as well, like you, you feel like you made it. And then as soon as that happened, boom, slapped in the face by this news and everything is gone. I got a little bit back in the settlement trickling throughout years later, but pretty much everything was gone and it sucked. But I don't have regrets. I look at everything as a lesson. That was my first lesson to diversify your account. So just as if you probably wouldn't keep all of your money in the same bank account, I planned on putting all of my money into PFG. I was going to make millions and millions of dollars, put it all in there. Never would have thought any, any, any different or foremost trading through PFG. But the lesson that I learned there was that, hey, you only want to have a certain amount in an account because worst case scenario, that could happen. So I think it is an excellent idea and, and the number is going to be different for everyone. But I think it's an excellent idea to only grow your account to a certain number. And then once you grow your account to a certain number, start an alternative account, right? Because worst case scenario, and, and brokers are a lot better now. So I, so it's, I think the chances are very slim, unless you're with, a, like, <clears throat> unless you're with darkalleybroker.com, which full disclaimer, if there's actually a darkalleybroker.com, I don't mean anything against you. I'm just trying to pick a name that would seem as shady as possible. Darkalleybroker.com, sign this contract, don't tell anyone, slash org, right? Unless you're with them, right? There's probably a slim chance of you getting scammed just because like, again, when this happened, um, this was still in the beginning stages, the first couple decades of Forex being um, retail. So this is where like the big scammy thing was all these brokers brokers would come out and blah, blah, blah. Now there's so little options out there, to be honest with you, that they're, they're all pretty legit and they're all kind of regulated in a different way, um, which is good. There's a lot more safety out there. So I'm darkalleybroker.com. Um, but worst case scenario, we always plan for the worst. Worst case scenario, if I've got a million dollars of trading capital, I don't want that million dollars in one account because... If something goes down, I've lost everything. Everything. So you put a cap on it. Maybe you cap it at, hey, once I get my account to a quarter mil, and again, we're, just, we're throwing out random numbers. Once I get my account to a quarter mil, 
and then I throw it in another account or, or, or I start up another account with another quarter mil. And then you have four accounts with a quarter mil for trading or you're throwing it in two different investing accounts or you're investing it in crypto, like, you know, whatever you want to do with it. But you don't want to have all your eggs in the same basket. Does that make sense, guys? So that's a that's a very a very a very a very good question. And it is something that, you know, it is something that you should think about. Now again, what that number is, that's it's different. I, I, th- I think it really depends on your risk appetite. So I, I don't think like you know, you grow your account from a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. I don't think you should start another account with a thousand dollars, right? Because the more you split those accounts, the harder it is to grow and stuff like that. Um, and again, the chances of something like that happen are, are, are very rare, especially if you pay attention. So like, for example, if you hear stuff about yen intervention and, you're, and that sets off red flags, don't trade yen pairs until it's over. Take them out of your portfolio, right? So again, people that, people, you should have been in the know about the, the Swiss. Again, it, it wasn't something that just came as a surprise. Like if you use any common sense in the market, when someone blatantly says, hey, we're not going to let our, our currency drop below 120, that's blatant manipulation. If they can manipulate it one way, it, come on now, right? So it's not like you're going to wake up one day and that's going to be a normal move. It's a black swan event, but it certainly could happen. And, and we always do want to prepare for the worse. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I had to cut it a little bit short because it was already long, but we're going to follow up on this episode in the very next episode of the Trading Coach Podcast and dig into the idea about correlating pairs and, and finding safety in that aspect a little bit more. So wait a couple days and we'll have part two of today's episode. While you're waiting, I'm contractually obligated to say, make sure you like, rate, subscribe, review, all the fun stuff that helps the show grow. Insert cheesy wink.